Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Economic Times, for giving us an opportunity. And thank you, audience, for joining this session. As uh, we heard uh, earlier, uh, fire chat and those conversations, using IT redefining the global banking. Today, like from the last six to seven years, if we had looked at uh, the how the IT was used uh, from the BFSI perspective for offering services. But today, when we look at the IT, because of the digital transformation, what it is happening, or what we call it as a digitization, then we see that uh, IT is not just an enabler, but it is also uh, helping the fintech or the BFSI uh, segment in terms of redefining the, what I can say is that the way the business models has to be put together. So that is where we are looking from the IT perspective. So when you look at that kind of uh, 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 IT transformation or the digital transformation happening, we also see a lot of trends coming in, right? For example, there, today we, everything is online, whether it's online banking, transactions, any kind of transaction, what happens in the BFSI or the fintech companies is all online. So the, the scale, what they require. And also what we have seen is uh, the trends, what we have looked at, not only from that perspective, the second is the merger and the consolidation of banks are happening. So there is, again, there is this wave which is coming up in terms of how to merge and consolidate these banks and also consolidate the applications, apps, uh, what the uh, banks are using and offering that to the customers. So that is one of the key things what we are looking at. And the, the third is that what we are seeing is that the fintech companies are one notch above in terms of technology. As one of the speakers earlier was speaking about how they use their AI and ML uh, kind of uh, technologies. So they are much ahead and they offer all kinds of services today, whether it's a, a credit, loan, banking, like uh, retirement, uh, consultants offering. So they do a lot of things and their advertisements and the way they put across to the customers, the user experience, what they bring in, uh, all that matters in terms of how they are using the technology and how they are becoming one notch ahead when we are looking in terms of how they are using that IT. And the fourth, what we are also looking at is the actually the RBI coming up with regulations in terms of allowing the smaller banks, not the nationalized banks. And we have seen that increase around 70 to 80%, like payment banks, like NPCI, all those kind of uh, payment gateways. So they are also increasing by 70 to 80% of their transactions. So when you look at all this, these trends are actually moving into terms of how the transformation trends move in, in terms of the BFSI, what they are looking at whether it can be in terms of scalability, whether they in terms of availability or in terms of agility, what they want. All that leads at the end is how I can provide the user experience or the customer experience in terms of accessing the applications, online banking, online transactions. This is what it is coming to at the end of the day, whether the fintech companies are collaborating with the bigger banks or the bigger banks are merging uh, with uh, consolidating the smaller banks and bringing up together. But at the end of the day, all this leads to the customer experience, the user experience, how the customers can adapt this and have a better experience. So when you look at these trends from the IT perspective or from the network perspective, we see these are the four trends which we look at. One is the data transfer, uh, center transformation, because today, there may be legacy applications, but because of this online transactions, online banking, there is a lot of cloud native applications which are being built. They are moving into virtualization. They are looking at containerization. They are looking at connecting it to the multi-cloud kind of an architecture because they want to provide a user experience and a customer experience much better than accessing at one central location, right? When we are looking at these kind of activities which are happening in terms of digital transformation at the back end, the data center where they host these applications and the apps should be ready to take uh, to have the capability to scale to provide that kind of resiliency to help them to actually bring up the applications and faster and also have that elasticity and agility to uh, distribute it across multiple data centers or it can be hosted in terms of the multi cloud architecture and provide those kind of capabilities so that is where we are seeing how this data tra center transformation either it may be from the network infrastructure perspective or it can be from the virtualization perspective 
and also it can be from accessing at multiple data centers or using the cloud as one of the key uh, uh, what i can say because some of the uh, when i interact with a lot of customers in the banking sector they say that they may use cloud to start with to test their applications may not be like a core banking sitting in the multi cloud architecture but they may be using this cloud for testing some of the few applications which they want to actually put it on production so these are some of the transformations what we see from the data center perspective the second when this digital transformation is happening we are also seeing that the branches also need to adapt to this digital transformation we are seeing that they want to optimize their wan network they want to provide better uh, branch quality of experience they call it as like a banking store for example so when these kind of uh, transformation are happening at the branch level then the branch transformation is also looked at very cleanly and also they want to do this transformations and they want to roll out this kind of banking branches into the transformation mode in a much faster way how can i uh, resolve the issues how can i uh, bring up the branches much faster how can i sit at one central location and manage the entire network without having any skill set at the branch level right these are some of the key aspects what they are looking at and the third not to say like it security is the key because for hackers finance segment is the first they target right and not only from the uh, banking and uh, applications the users the infrastructure all needs to be protected but also from the regulatory perspective they also need to look at how they are secured in terms of offering these services to the customers because it's everything is online today and finally when they want to move to towards this kind of uh, scenario where they want to get digitization to go ahead they want the digital transformation to take place they want the branches to be a, like a banking stores or a fintech companies how they use it to better give the users who come there for a better experience and have a security which encompasses across the data center branch and any of the access what they use to get the customers onto their applications and uh, apps what they want to use so the automation becomes a key right how fast and how fast i can identify the problems how fast i can resolve the problems how fast i can automate the branches how fast i can scale out the data center when i want to actually bring up the application so these are the transformation trends what we are seeing from the bfsi segment so moving ahead what i wanted to say is that when you look at this the juniper offers solutions in those verticals so for example in a data center today as there may be legacy applications you can have bare metal servers running legacy applications and slowly the uh, bfsi customer may be moving towards the virtualization the containerization those cloud native applications so he may be taking into the vmware kind of a virtualization or they may be moving into a red hat kind of uh, virtualization concepts they may start using kubernetes and containerization kind of aspects and they may also have a multi cloud as i talked about earlier they may also host some of their applications into the cloud kind of a scenario they may use their applications to do the testing in the cloud kind of a scenario because one of the uh, in one of the speakers were talking earlier that we are not sure how my applications are able to scale for the number of users and the transactions which comes into the uh, my network right so that is the key so those kind of things can be done at the cloud level correct without uh, even the services not being interrupted so once we look at this then the center thing what i call it as a network fabric or a network uh, infrastructure plays a very key role because the network infrastructure should have the capability to have the very good scale out model in terms of scale out in terms of flexibility in terms of adaptability and also be agility and elasticity so these kind of uh, capabilities which needs to be offered and it should have a single dashboard which can do all this from a single dashboard starting from bringing up a greenfield data center or a brownfield data center moving into a scale out model having a single policy across your private cloud and a public cloud and then it can be a virtualized environment it can be a bare metal environment how this all can be connected together and provide the services to the customers and also provide the user experience at the end of the day so this is where we come in as juniper where we can provide this kind of solutions in terms of data center in terms of providing the network fabric architecture which is open based scale out highly available resilient and very flexible and agile so this is one of the key concepts which we are looking and we have seen lot of customers moving towards when they are moving towards digital transformation the first thing they look at is how do i transform my data center to a cloud native or cloud ready data center 
that is the question always they ask us how can i transform my data center with the existing one brownfield or a new one which i want to build as a dr or any near line data center then how i can build it as a cloud ready data center so this is the approach you can take slowly in terms of having a bare metal moving into your virtualization moving into your containerization and then hooking up to the cloud and then having a one single uh, uh, window where you can manage the entire as a one single logical data center moving further so that is where i was talking about the uh, data center but when you move towards the van uh, or the branch uh, transformation so everyone is heard of uh, like people are like a lot of uh, oems lot of customers are asking for like sd wan as a technology right so they feel that any kind of wan bandwidth like it can be a internet it can be a lte it can be an mpls it depends on whatever the bandwidth you are able to get at that particular branch how i can use it how i can reduce my opex how i can optimize my wan bandwidth in terms of using the applications all this comes into play when we look at the branch accessing the applications how can i have a local breakout if i want to host the applications in the cloud and the branch and the branch users can have a local breakout so that they don't have to come to the headquarters for accessing certain applications and provide a better user experience right so when we look at this kind of architectures what we bring in is we bring in something not only the sd wan which is uh, which provides all these capabilities but we are going much ahead today customers are looking much ahead than the sd wan what they are looking at they are looking at how is my banking application or an online transaction the customer is using or the any online uh, banking what he is trying to do how is this giving as a user experience as a customer experience end to end that is the key how is the assurance is taken care whether the client sitting on a wifi whether the client sitting on a wired or it is going across the wan network but how does that experience looks like where if at all there is an issue can i look at the issue starting from the client to the data center or from the client to the cloud this is what we call it as a wifi wired and a wan assurance solution what we bring in the sd wan doesn't talk about assurances but what we talk about here is how i can bring that assurance end to end from client to the cloud or from client to the data center and also bring lot of ai and ml into the picture so that if you look at at the top there is a mavis mavis is a natural language process what we use in terms of not using cli not using any of the gui you can just go to the mavis and say how is my banking application working today so it will tell you how this application as per your assurance parameters how it is working whether it is good whether it is bad whether there was congestion in the wan network or there was some issue in the wired network or there were lot of wifi clients being connected to your access point so they were not able to get the better experience what has been assured in terms of the experience what they were supposed to get those kind of things will be coming out clearly from the mavis engine so it is a behavioral analysis it does the ai and ml and gives you those output saying that how your applications are working end to end this is something unique and we have come up, we are uh, having a uh, we are taking over a company known as 128t which actually gives us that capability to do a application based session based control over the complete wan infrastructure this is something unique it is not sd wan this is much much above than the sd wan the third factor what i wanted to talk about is the security right the perimeter is everywhere today we can't define a perimeter because wherever there are users wherever users get connected to the network infrastructure and wherever the users access the applications that becomes a threat right for any of the kind of uh, hackers to get in so today the perimeter i can't define it's only at the data center i can't define it's only at the branch if you look at this slide the perimeter is everywhere that means to say that it is at the data center level it is at the branch level it is at the users who are accessing these applications and also the uh, data center be connected to a uh, public cloud whether it may be a uh, amazon it may be azure it may be a esds any kind of cloud what the uh, bfsi customer wants to connect to them right so today this is becoming the key so when we look at this slide we need to look at holistically from a top down approach how i can provide the security end to end whether it's a user whether it's an application or whether it's a network infrastructure right or it may be lying in terms of the data center branch campus remote user or at the multi cloud architecture so this is where we need to look at and today security has changed a lot 
because of the digital transformation, because of the technologies which has been adopted by the BFSI or the financial organizations. Today, we can't have the same security which we used to use for the last eight to 10 years because of virtualization, because of containerization, because of cloud, multi-cloud architecture. So I can't have the same big firewall sitting at the perimeter and saying that I am my whole data center or whole uh, everything is taken care of. There are a lot of blind spots which comes in. So we need to cover those blind spots in terms of the virtualization perspective. You may have to have a virtualized security, for example. You may have a cloud-based security. When I move the virtualized workload to any of the cloud, then how can I move the policy as well with the, uh, with the complete workload across to the cloud? How can I push the policies to the cloud, right? So those kind of security which has been changed, we need to be looked at. So security cannot work in silos. So what we bring in is something known as a connected security. So it should be connected across everything, right? It can be a user, it can be a network infrastructure, it can be an application, but there should be a single policy enforcement engine sitting where it can push the policies across the data center, across the campus, across the branch or across to the cloud. So this is the capability what you need to look at. If some hacker come, tries to hack in and you have identified that and you have put a policy to your, for example, to your next generation firewall, then the same policy dynamically should be able to push across your branch network so that the hacker cannot come across the branches as well. It should be able to push into the cloud itself. It should be able to push into the Wi-Fi uh, network. It should be able to push to the wired network. So that is how this connected security should work. It can be IoT, it can be a user, it can be a, a network infrastructure, it can be firewalls, it can be switch, it can be access point. That doesn't matter. But when there is any threat which has been seen from the organization perspective, how can I protect that threat? How can I connect that policy across my entire organization so that I can safeguard from that particular threat dynamically at that particular instance? And how can I reduce my blast radius and see to it that it doesn't affect the whole of my organization, right? That is the key when we talk about a connected security. That is what we bring in a solution. If you look at it, whether it's virtualized, whether we need to push the policies across the network infrastructure or different kinds of security, which you can adapt to is what we bring in as a connected security as a solution. And finally, what we also have is when we talk about all this, then you need to also have a lot of analytics in place because today telemetry is becoming one of the key criteria to have a lot of analytics. So that we can collect a lot of data as uh, someone in the speakers was taking about what is money laundering. We can collect data and do that. In the same way, from the network perspective, we can collect a lot of data and provide a lot of inputs to actually do a closed loop automation. That means to say that I can say, how is the health of my network today? And we, I can look at the protocols. What are the protocols? How is the health? all those capabilities and trigger that kind of alerts to the dashboard saying that these are some of the issues. There is a congestion or there is some links which has gone down. I have to reroute the traffic, those kind of activities and the, the dashboard can take the relevant actions and push those configurations to the network. So this is something known as a closed loop automation. And this all runs through AI, ML and those kind of uh, behavioral analysis and puts it together and gives you the output to take the action or with a closed loop automation with a lot of API integration, this can be done with a dynamic kind of architecture. So this is one of the key things. So finally, I just wanted to say that Juniper today, uh, people look at, a, uh, like customers look at a lot of Gartner, where we are placed in the Gartner, right? So if you look at this, whether it's a data center, whether it's a wired and wireless architecture, you look at any kind of solutions, what I talked about, we are in the top post quadrant in the magic quadrant. So this is one which we wanted to highlight in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, vision, in terms of execution, in terms of innovation, what we bring in, we have been positioned at the top quadrant in terms of the magic quadrant from the Gartner perspective. So this is what I wanted to discuss about how this digital transformation has happening. What are the trends we are seeing? The key takeaways is, Data center transformation, as I talked about, it is moving towards a cloud-ready data center. And in terms of the brand transformation, it is just not SD-WAN the customers are looking at. They are looking at much more in terms of how I can provide an assurance to the users and build that user experience and the customer experience because of the competition they are facing. So this is what they are looking at in the third, that security should be holistically approached in terms of the entire organization. I cannot 
divide that into a silo saying I can only do security for the data center, but not for the branches. So it should be looked at as a connected security and how I can take care of the threats. And finally, how the, all this can be automated and uh, with the using all the artificial intelligence and ML and see to it that how fast I can roll the applications, how fast I can roll the brand transformations and how can resolve the issues faster and actually make the network available at 99.99% for the 365 days. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.